what are your best, this customer is totally trying to screw us over stories? Story one, okay, this is a bit long, but one of my proudest call center moments, albeit bittersweet. So I worked at unnamed major hardware slash software company, Inc., doing tech support. And we had this repair service where people could send in their broken cow to get fixed. If the cow was within warranty, it would be free. And if it was out, you could spend money to get it fixed, which is always cheaper than buying new cow. We all had power to give discounts or even free repairs at our own discretion. So anyway, some dude called in and told me his cow was broken. First red flag was that he had no interest in troubleshooting the issue. He basically gave a scenario that was a complete textbook example of needing repair. Almost sounded as though he was reciting from our own knowledge base. But what do I care? Less work for me. So I run the SN and it's out of warranty, so I quote him the repair costs, to which he pushes back. Personally, I always try to judge people on their ability to pay the amount based on their reaction to the price. I've had a few people break into tears when their cow was broken right before Christmas. And this guy was just unfazed. He went immediately to, what can you do for me on the price? I remained resolute and he continued pushing for it. It very much felt less like, could I please get a discount? And more like, I know you can give me a discount, so let's have it. And it's my choice whether to offer so fudge that guy full price. So he sighed and gave me his information. Now we had this system that held all orders and repairs and contact info from past customers. So it was standard procedure to search to see if the person getting a repair is already in the system. He gave me the info. There were no existing records. I put him in the system, set the repair up, and got off the phone. Like a boss. But that call man, it was just fishy. So I took each of the pieces of info he gave me, phone, email, address, etc., and ran separate searches on each of them. Sure enough, other accounts popped up, about 17 in all, and each one had repairs on different systems with huge discounts. Many were free. Well, I wrote up a big, nice report on all this and sent it off to my lead. That night, on my way home, the recruiter lady for the position called me and told me I was completed, laid off, and not to come in the next day. Not a big deal, was a seasonal job, knew it was coming. Fast forward a few weeks, my old lead, whom I had on Facebook, messaged me to let me know that she followed up on my report. Turns out they found 49 accounts total, and they all had ties to a used cow and cow repair shop in California. Basically, this shop had been scamming the company for nine plus months, likely offering repair service to customers, and then having my company fix the cow for free to make a profit. It's also assumed that people were selling their broken cow to them so they can have it fixed for free and resell it. Story 2. Was working the returns desk at Walmart. Someone is returning a PS2. I take the box off the counter and prepare to open it to inspect it. Feels a little light. Open the box and remove it from the packaging. It's wood-shaped and glued in the shape of a PS2. Spray-painted black with an actual PS2 serial number sticker on the back in the correct location. So if you just look through the hole in the box to see the serial, it looks normal. The customer said, it was like this when we got it. We kept the fake PS2 and told them to leave. Last I heard the fake PS2 was still in the manager's office. Story 3. I used to work at a Reebok outlet store. Our return policy was the same as a lot of places. Receipt means you can get money back. No receipt means you can only get store credit exchange. We had a guy that would come in every week and exchange 25 polo shirts in all different sizes, styles. It was always 25 shirts and nobody ever seemed to remember him carrying the return shirts into the store. He was pretty clearly just walking into the store, grabbing 50 shirts and exchanging 25 of them for the other 25. I don't know why he needed that many shirts. Maybe he was selling them or something. Anyway, I make up my mind that I'm not going to let this guy get away with it anymore. I didn't even care that he was stealing from the store. I just didn't like that he thought he was being clever. So the next time he came in, I watched him like a hawk. I saw him do exactly what we thought, just grabbing 50 shirts and walking up to the counter to exchange half of them for the other half. Except before he could say anything, I said, wow, buying a lot of shirts today or something like that. He said, no, I'm actually returning these for these. I just replied, Sir, you can't return shirts that you haven't bought yet. He got all indignant and defensive, but obviously realized he was caught. So he left the shirts on the counter and started to leave the store, saying, You just lost yourself a long-time customer. I told him to stop and said completely straight-faced, Sir, we have cameras in the store and in the parking lot, so we know you were stealing and we know your license plate number. I also have your name and address from the ID you gave me for the returns. You're going to buy all 50 of those shirts or I'm going to call the police. He stopped hastily walked over, bought all 50 shirts, left the store, and never came back. And no, we did not have any security cameras. Story 4. Mixed slave for five years, three of them as a manager. 
There was this lady, who may have had some mental deficits, who used to come through the drive through every day around noon on first shift and order one large cola. No food, no different drink, nothing. When she'd get up to the window, she'd say something along the lines of, Oh no, I left my wallet at home. Since you've already made the drink anyway, can I just get it for free? Every day we'd say no. Every day she'd come back. We made certain that no one was ever actually handing the drink out, so she never had a reason to believe we'd say yes. But every day she'd still come back and try the same thing. So many times I just wanted to say to her, just do it like everyone else. Come inside, order a water, and get cola at the fountain instead. But that'd be very unmanager-like of me. Story 5. Not a typical screw-over. But, in the town where I go to college, University of Massachusetts Amherst, there's a pretty well-known, almost famous pizza place called Antonio's. Amherst also gets a decent amount of large musical acts because of our big indoor stadium. Well, when Bob Dylan came through last fall, someone went into Antonio's and said, Hi, I'm with Bob Dylan's tour. We need 175 pizzas for tomorrow night. Antonio's crew works through the entire night to have no one pick up the pizzas. It was just some D-bag student playing a joke. He later confessed and was charged the cost of the pizzas, $3,900. Story 6. I hate Teletouch callers. You know, the calls where an operator is translating for a deaf person. In retail businesses, they're almost always a scam because the calls are anonymous and untraceable. When I first started working at a bakery, I got a call from one deaf guy who wanted to order 500 cookies for that upcoming weekend. This would have been a huge order for us, almost undoable unless we put in extra hours. I was trying to get the guy's information while talking to the operator and dealing with in-store customers. The guy wanted me to run his credit card number for the thousand or so dollars these cookies would cost. But alarm bells were going off. And suddenly, the operator transferred me to a manager who told me, We suspect illegal activity from this caller. Please disregard all information he gave you. I ended up wasting 45 minutes on this caller, only to find out that this is a common scam. Story 7. Two guys came into the deli I used to work at and bought $90 worth of food. They tried to pay with a $300 money order, and this guy I worked with took it and gave them the chain. He was not dumb. He just had more faith in humanity than he should have. Obviously, it was fake. So the police looked into it and they never got caught because somehow their address was registered as the Dorothy Day Center for the homeless. So they said there was no way to find them. Also, one time, a woman ordered a Reuben and came back about six hours later, saying that her sandwich was wrong and that it was cold. I remember making it for her and ringing her up. So I take the box and open it only to find three quarters of the way eaten sandwich. I asked her two questions. One, why did you eat most of it and expect me to give you a refund? Two, did you really expect it to stay warm indefinitely until you decided to eat it? She asked to speak to my manager and he laughed at her and told her I made two valid points. We lost a bad customer that day and I got a raise shortly afterwards. Story 8. I was working at Best Buy in college and this lady came in. She looked pretty trailer trashy as this Best Buy is near a town that people of that variety hail from. She was computer illiterate and wanted me to show her some machines. So I went about my business as usual as I would with any other employee asked her what she was using the machine for and who would be using it. For every question, she just shot back, I don't know. So I asked her why she was looking for a computer and she said, I don't know. Okay. Then she starts looking at machines and says, what do you think of this one and that one? Okay, that's fine. As the store was pretty empty, I said, okay. Then she started to get in my face saying, the guy at Staples explained every single part of the machine to me. But I kept my cool as she tried to escalate the situation. So I answered her questions and she left happy with a few printouts of spec sheets to bring her husband. The next day I came into work and three managers, who know how I am with customers, pulled me aside and asked me if I had any problems yesterday. Then they described the most ridiculous story I've ever heard. The lady came back with her husband and she was apparently in tears. Her husband said to the managers, hours before I got to work, that I had berated his wife, called her fat and stupid, and told her that she was a piece of cow and that they wanted a computer for free. She claimed that after I said all this, she left the store in tears and went to the parking lot and cried in her car for an hour. So my managers went to the tape of her leaving the store. They had it right there. Her leaving the store with a literal smile on her face. They kept fighting that they wanted a free computer, but eventually settled on the worst piece of cow in the store at the time. Right before they were about to pay, the wife says, but he told me that one was a bad computer. The husband grabs her violently by the arm and drags her out of the store while she is in tears. Guess your plan to get a free computer didn't work out. Nice try. Story 9. I worked at a frozen yogurt place. Some girls came in and got their yogurt. They went outside to eat it. One of them comes in, nearly done with hers, and demands a new one because there is a hair in it. Both of us working were guys with short dark hair. The hair in hers was long and dirty blonde. 
She was dirty blonde. We don't have anyone with dirty blonde hair as an employee. We told her to kindly fudge off in customer service speech. Edit. There used to be a black guy that would come in almost every day. At least I think so. I was only part-time. He would always ask for samples for everything. And he never bought anything. It didn't bug me because, well, I didn't give a cow. But he was totally taking advantage of the free samples policy we had. Story 10. Several years ago, I was a manager at a large chain bookstore. Our district manager had made us aware of a scam, wherein a family would make a large purchase of DVDs and CDs by check in a nearby town, drive to our city, and return the stuff for cash the same day. Later, they'd stop payment on the check, a $25 fee at the time, for a net gain of several hundred dollars. We were powerless to stop them. The DM even told us so. We were just to note the time and date so that eventually we could ban them from all our stores. This infuriated me. I got paid peanuts to work for that store and these people were playing us for more money than I made in a night. So I resolved that if ever they came into my store when I was working, I was going to give them hell in exchange for the money. One night, it happened. I got a call back to the music department and sure enough, there's a stack of DVDs on the counter and the woman has a receipt from a store 100s of miles away, paid by check. As I've said, we knew these people had their descriptions, even knew what their car looked like. So I tell them I need to double check on the policy because it's recently changed and walk away to the front of the store. I can't stop them, but I'm stalling. I'd like to think of something, anything, to stop them from pulling this cow and getting one over on me. And then I look out the window. I am not a religious man at all. But what I saw there is how I imagine believers who witness a miracle must feel. They'd parked in the handicapped spot. Maybe they felt the need to leave in a hurry, who knows, but they'd messed up this up royally. Gleefully, I strut to the back office and call the police, informing them there's a car parked in our handicapped spot and ask them to send a wrecker. The dispatcher informs me they don't tow cars so parked, but there's a squad car in the area, and since it's a slow night, she'll send him over for the ticket. If he heads straight there, she says, it'll take him 10 minutes. I almost cow my pants. I grabbed my in-store phone and called my lead, telling her the plan and stationing her out front for when the cop arrived. I gave it five minutes and marched back to the music department. I looked the woman straight in the eye and told her we couldn't give her her money back. Due to a series of scams recently pulled in much the same way, we couldn't take the returns from another store. Predictably, she flew off the handle. The little flecks of spit at the corners of her mouth as she screamed her defiance at me were really, really satisfying. In the middle of her tirade, I heard my lead page, Tiny Dancer, and I knew the trap was laid. When she finally calmed down, I again looked her square in the eye. Madame, I know who you are. I know who they, gesturing to the teenage son and daughter she always brought along on her escapades, are. I know where you live and what you've been doing, and I invite you to leave and take your things with you. If the police will let you anyway, her face fell in slow time. I could see the wheels turning behind her eyes, wondering if it was a bluff, and the fear that was slowly erupting. Shouting imprecations and threats at me, she gathered her things and her spawn and swept out of the store. I hurried to the window. She went outside to find the cop shining a flashlight into her car. I couldn't make out what she was saying, but the screaming seemed to indicate her unhappiness. The cop remained cool and began writing her a ticket. And then again, the slow time. She dropped her purse and loot, walked over to the cop, snatched his ticket book and slapped him with it. Naturally, I ran outside. The cop recovered smoothly, grabbed her wrists and cuffed her on the spot. Her son, the older of the two, attempted to grab her purse and keys, but the cop informed him the car was impounded and the purse would have to be checked for sweets. He started to look shifty, telling the cop he and his sister were teenagers from San Antonio and had no way to get home. He replied, Maybe your mother should have thought about that before assaulting a police officer. This cop was a mother hero. Anyway, she got to do some time for her antics, I'm sure, but I can't say I gave a fudge. I beat them, fair and square. And once word got around, I was the district legend. God, that was a great job. Story 11. I work major chain clothing mall retail, and it's a very rare occasion I get to say no. Customer calls, expired coupon, she didn't get it in the mail till five days later, blah, blah, blah. I give her the old, of course we'll make an exception for you this one timeline of nonsense. I ask her her name and when she'll be in and she says in a couple of hours. Flash forward to a couple hours later. I'm folding in the front of the store and I overhear a woman with her friend saying how she always uses coupons more than once. The stores will always make an exception and how she hasn't ever paid full price. I looked at her, said, Hi Grace, we talked earlier on the phone about the coupon. She was so startled she had to say yes. Sorry Grace, we won't be able to take care of that coupon tonight. It's little, but it's all I got. Story 12. Worked at a Sears years ago and had a customer bring in an electronic toothbrush for exchange because it stopped working. This cow is old, old and used a lot. 
Customer complains that we won't take it back even though it's obviously used. There's no box or receipt. Demands to speak to a manager and begins to get really agitated. Manager researches and not only can he not find the part number in the system from the last year, but we've never sold this brand. Manager finally relents and gives him a brand new electronic toothbrush and a store credit for the troubles. TLDR, bring cow back to Sears and complain enough until someone gives you something for free. Story 13, how about a story to restore faith in humanity? I worked at a full-service gas station. Someone came in, asked for a fill-up and a carton of smokes. Gas was 60 and the smokes were 80, $140 total. He tries to use his debit and it doesn't work. Tries again, no go. Doesn't have cash or credit on him. He says, I'll just run to the bank, I'll be right back. Standard procedure is to take back anything that can be taken back. Anything but gas fluids that have been put in. And the rest are written up with a ton of info with them, just in case they bail. What I did was send a total stranger away with $140 worth of stuff without even thinking to take down his license plate number, let alone name, phone number. He's gone for 20 minutes and I think I am royally messed up now. No excuse for what I've done. And he pulls in and pays his stuff back. I don't think I've ever been more surprised and relieved at the same time. Story 14. I'm a travel agent and I was handling a very large group cruise. The group leader would come in with big wads of cash, some large bills, some small. She would want individual receipts for each person on her list. She was always shuffling money around at my desk, trying to confuse me. However, I spent way too many years as a cocktail waitress to let her get anything past me. She kept asking me things she knew I would have to get up from my desk to get, like a bajillion printed receipts, etc. I would just take the cash with me. So come final payment, she didn't have enough to pay the entire thing. I think she was scamming her relatives and trying to scam me at the same time. I worked for a very large well-known travel agency at the time. She called and tried to tell them that I screwed up the booking, that I didn't give her receipts for money she had paid, etc. I had alerted my manager to her from the beginning, so she was prepared for her. When the lady came into the office accusing my manager of being a cyst, anything to get that free trip, she was quite embarrassed when my manager showed her a picture of herself with her African-American husband. I didn't get screwed, and the look on her face as she left the office defeated was priceless. Story 15. A man came into my censored photo store and bought a DVD, went out to his big peach truck with portable DVD player, and sat there for near on two hours. I wonder what he was doing in there. He jumped down from the cab, came jogging back inside, and took advantage of our 24-hour return policy. Edit. This is for all of you who have cat managers that kowtow to rude customers. At that same censored photos store is a little anteroom where we check IDs. You walk in this little room, push your ID through the Pelix glass slot, and we buzz you in. One night we had this couple come in and try to return a vibe. In my state and probably many others, you cannot return the toys, and believe me, many people tried. My manager tried to explain this, and they kept getting more and more angry, till both my manager and the couple were screaming at one another. They finally reached through the slot and attempted to throw the vibe at us. Of course he failed as it was a pretty small hole. That was flipping it, my manager had enough. He grabbed that vibe and jumped the counter, opened the main door and threw that flipping 12-inch vibrating cock at that man's head, hitting him full on in the face, and then screamed at them both to take their dirty cock and GDFO out of his store. I miss that place. I might do an AMA if anybody wants. I have tons of crazy stories. Story 16. I was 12, working in my mom and dad's shoe store. We had a woman who often came in and looked at shoes, just browsing the store at length. When my parents were elsewhere in the store, she would often approach me with shoes, asking for a discount because of some minor fault with them, or trying to buy them with another price tag attached. At that point, I was just oblivious and didn't do anything but correct her, deny her. Afterwards, my mom told me she would do this all the time on purpose, also that she sometimes made the scuffs or damaged the shoes herself. I remember at first being amazed that people would do this, and I think this was my first meeting with a grown-up, full-blown retard in an adult setting. I was exceptionally stubborn as a child, and I'm not sure if I decided to fight fire with fire or if it just happened. Anyway, I started alternating between playing the clueless kid slash accommodating businessman every time there was an issue. I would drift off to help other customers while she was waiting, stalking her around the store trying to be of help, watching her scuff shoes, but never noticing, act like I was uncertain, and on the verge of giving her a discount for a lengthy time. But then, not. She came by our store maybe 10 times in those two summer months, and this happened every time. As I saw it, people were giving her a pass because she was quarrelsome. I was at work and couldn't give a oh no about the time spent. I would spend one, five hour just to annoy her, making her feel like she was gaining ground, but ultimately never giving an inch. This is a strategy I still use when people try to fudge me over. Story 17. I work in the prepared foods department of a supermarket. 
We do large orders of chicken and various sides, and during the summer, about 50% of our business is essentially catering. We had a lady come in at noon for a pickup, huge $200 order, chicken, nearly every side we carry. Only problem is this order was taken down as 3 p.m., so none of the stuff was even close to being done. We were swamped, and there was no way we'd be able to cook it for her while she waited. I got my manager up front, and the customer started the waterworks. The food was for a funeral reception, and etc., 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 etc. We realized that it is very possible this was a mistake on our part, because we ran a very shaky crew at the time, and someone taking an order wrong was pretty common. We give her what we can, essentially clearing out our to-go bar. About $150 of food we're going to sell her for $50. She goes to ring out and has us ring out a giant cake as well. A cake that had to be ordered ahead of time. We call the bakery department. She had just pulled the same cow there. We call her out and she runs out of the store, possibly in tears again. We ate the cake. Story 18. When I was working as a short order cook, I had one customer send back a Caesar salad, saying that the dressing was sour. Unknown to him, I had just made the dressing that was on his salad less than an hour ago. I told the waitress as much, and on top of that had our chef taste the dressing in front of her to prove that it was all fine. Within a few minutes of this, the waitress came back into the kitchen and informed us that his response had been, I know something is up here. I'm going to call a health inspector. To which our chef responds that the waitress should offer him the use of our telephone. Worst of all, after that, this cowhead has the audacity to stay and order untrees and desert. Story 19. I work at a local music store that sells new and used CDs, vinyls, and DVDs, little hole in the wall, lots of character, and lots of regulars. Regular to the point where we don't really have to keep an eye on them or make sure they follow protocol. I've only been there a few months as of now, and a couple of weeks ago, I got to meet one of our regulars. Let's call him John. Well, hell, I didn't know this, but John has a mental disorder of some sort, I think some version of Asperger's, and he has a couple of things unique to him. He's probably in his 50s and lives with his mother and sister who keep him on the right track. One of the things they do for him is keep a fake credit card tab for it. Think Monopoly money version of a credit card. His main problem with his disorder is hoarding, which results in compulsive buying. We will get back to this point. Just remember it. The first thing that catches my eye is that he pulls some of the used vinyl out to inspect them. Perfectly normal, double-checking that no flaws made it past our inspection. But he does it in a very peculiar way. He runs his finger along the grooves and holds it up to his ear, as if his finger is the needle and he is listening to the music. Whatever, I figure this is just something vinyl collectors do, but I keep an eye on him. I make note that he found a Billy Joel album and write it down. If he doesn't buy it, I'm definitely going to at least give it a look. I may buy it later. I look up an hour later or so, and he has a stack of vinyls and is still rubbing and holding the Billy Joel vinyl. I think, ah, oh, what the hell? Maybe he just picked it back up. I've been dealing with other customers. Now, one very important thing here is, John likes to spend a ton of time in our store, upwards of three, four hours per stay. So, after I look back up, I go and check on him. Typical sales nonsense me. You need help finding anything. And have you found everything all right so far? John, yeah, I just noticed this album and I really like the way it looks. Holds up Billy Joel album me. Yeah, man, that's a good one. Wish I had seen it over here. Must have come in on my off days moment of silence. Notice he's rubbing it again. All right, well, if you need any help, feel free to ask. At this point, I start patrolling the floor. Common knowledge in departments, sales, patrolling the floors, offering help, organizing, etc. cuts down on shoplifting and whatnot. My manager heads out to lunch and it's just me in the store. No biggie. I know how to basically do everything. Continue on my normal route dot. The store isn't huge, just a little hole in the wall. I can easily see the whole store no matter where I am in the store. Check a couple customers out, help them with special order. Normal humdrum nonsense. Now it's just John and I in the store. He doesn't show any symptoms of his disorder. Literally none. Maybe some social awkwardness. But other than that, very sharp, well-dressed, great taste in music. I notice he knows anything about any music I toss his way. We chit-chat about good music, blah, blah, blah. Here comes the big moment. The guy has about 20 vinyls under his arm, some new, some used, and about three to four CDS, all used. I ring up the whole purchase and ask for his card. He hands it over, looks like a standard debit credit card. I go to swipe it and get an error reading card. Now, back to the Monopoly money thing. This guy's family has basically given him a fake card like off of those free credit card offers you get in the mail because he is a compulsive buyer. They are personal friends with the owner and manager, and John is a 15-plus year customer. The thing is, and I didn't know this, our company always makes a duplicate receipt and calls his family that night. The next morning, they bring it all back, unopened and everything. Every time, guess who wasn't in the know? 
I'll give you a hint. He has two thumbs and was standing awkwardly behind a register, swiping a fake credit card to no avail. That's right, this guy. And man was this about to get embarrassing. He laughs a bit and says, I don't know what it is, but the new guys always seem to land an error code with my card. Maybe it's just a new guy curse. Truth be told, they never swipe his card. They just pretend to check him out, get him to sign a duplicate receipt, which goes in the drawer for later. When totaling, it helps us explain the X dollars missing. So here comes the fun part. I type in the number and everything since swiping isn't working. No avail. I tell him it isn't working, so he says, Here, let me put my name on these. I'll just get them tomorrow. I give him a reserve slip and stick it to it. And he hurriedly walks out. I smile triumphantly. Little old man isn't ripping me off today. Manager gets back from lunch. I tell him of my experience and show him the stack of records John wanted to hold. That his card wasn't working and looked kind of fake. The manager face palmed, explained the situation to me, and got a good laugh dot. Next day I was off, John came in, asked for his records, bought them, went about his usual business. Also, we have a thing behind the counter typed and laminated taped to the register that says John's code and basically how to check him out. Story 20. I work as a part-time butcher to pay off my student loan each year, and the customers are ageist as hell. But I think that's just retail in general. But they seem to think because I'm a student, 22. They think they can take advantage of me? At least once a week, I get some shower coming up to my counter and asking for diced beef, which is probably one of the cheapest things in there. I would then go to bag some up and they'll say, no, I wanted you to dice up the fillet steak and charge me for the diced beef. Story 21. Used to work at a bookstore and for a while I was the guy who covered breaks for the people in the music and movies area. One day, a woman in her latish 20s, clearly someone who works out, fake tans, fake nails, you know the type, comes to the store with an open DVD and asks the guy at the front desk to do a return. He asks why she wants to return it. She says she didn't like it. He then explains that we don't accept returns on open DVDs, shows her the sign saying as much, and says if it isn't defective, there isn't anything he can do. She gets angry and decides to try to come upstairs to try getting the refund from me. The front desk guy calls me, lets me know what's going on. I see her get off the escalator and watch her break the case for the DVD which she had bought. She approaches and I calmly explain to her why we can't accept a refund because she simply didn't like the DVD. She tells me she wants to return it because it's broken. So I tell her I witnessed her break it on her walk over to me. She goes ape at me and demands to see my supervisor. At this point, the person who was on break returns and is sort of my supervisor, so I told her the situation and let her try to explain the exact same thing. The woman is now furious and demands to speak to a manager. Manager walks over. We explain the situation to him and expect him to be the final, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. Instead, the pansy manager took one look at the woman and said, well, just this once, let's make an exception. Story 22. I work at Olive Garden and we have that oh-so-famous soup and salad deal. Well, I had a party of four come in, all about 16 or 17, all order soup and salad. Considering they're my only table, I, fairly quickly, bring out drinks and their soup and salad, they all thank me and start eating. Before I walk away, they ask if they can see my manager. I assume they want to put in a good word. My manager comes over. Let me explain him really quick. He is from some Pacific Island country and has a very hard time understanding people when they talk too quickly, let alone how the company is run and how to even use the computers to put in orders. No, I don't know how he got this job. Well, anyway, my manager comes over and asks the table what he can do for them. Very little, obviously. They start complaining that I am an awful server and have yet to bring out any of their food. According to them, they never got anything, drinks or food. Now it's quite obvious that they got everything they ordered. They demand that everything get taken off the bill. Now my manager isn't obviously going to argue with them because he won't understand what he's arguing about. So he just gives them all free food, free desert, and a $25 gift card. And I get written up for customer complaints. Ah, but it doesn't end there. They stiff me, yes. But one of the 17 or so slut bags has the audacity to leave me her phone number with her name. I formulate my plan. I call her well after my shift with them, two days actually. After a few rings, it goes to voicemail once with the typical, hello, you've reached the Sprint voicemail box of, perfect. She calls back, I start, hello, I am calling in regards to your most recent bill with Sprint. She instantly calls for her mother, muhuhahaha. Her mother picks up, hello, sorry to call under such harsh pretenses, but your daughter recently came into an olive garden I work at, nearly gets me fired and then stiffs me. I go on to tell my story. She actually takes my side and makes sure everything is taken care of. The next day I work, I receive a letter with $50 and a handwritten note saying how her daughter will be selling her new car, never seeing the light of day, blah, blah, blah. 
Apparently, she does this to a lot of servers in a lot of different restaurants, according to her mother, who recently found out. Story 23. This was pure gold. The fact extent of this backfiring on the customer was astounding. Okay, so I was a security officer and worked with a guy named Ryan who was my on-site boss. I came to work to relieve him one day and he tells me about some insane stuff that happened at the condo we worked at. This was during summer and a lot of residents were making use of the pool deck. There was this guy smoking a cane and basically walking patrols around the pool. He had an object on his belt that looked like a phone but turned out to be a camera. He would go to certain points on the deck and put his hand on his hip to snap the photos. We will get to what he was taking pictures of here in a bit after I explain the insanity that took place. A few of the white knights on the deck figured he was doing something shady and confronted him. Two people basically jumped him and starting beating on him, and my boss Ryan was called by another resident saying how, these two guys are beating the cow out of another one, come quick. He runs in there and shoves them off and they try to tell Ryan how he is a pedophile and taking pictures of their kids. There were two kids out there, but they were sitting at a table playing a board game far away from this. He calls the police while those guys that roughed him up pace back and forth outside the security office, and Ryan and this guy taking the pictures are inside. Ryan simply and bluntly asks him, If I look at these pictures, am I going to find pictures of kids? No. I'm telling you! No. Okay, what about the women that were out there? Probably. Yeah, but I wasn't doing anything sick. The police arrive and they take it from there. When I come to relieve him, the president of the homeowners association comes out and says, So what happened? There was some sicko taking pictures of kids at the pool? Ryan says no, explains who it was and what's going on, and the president's face goes white. He says, oh, don't worry about this. I will take care of it. I will take care of it, and slithers off. Turns out this peach hole put this guy up to taking the pictures at the pool deck because he was trying to catch us not doing our job and keeping glass off the pool deck. There's legal action going on about this still. I don't know the details, but I remember there were plenty of meetings with lawyers who were proud to announce their profession when they came to park. Story 24. I worked at BJ's Wholesale Club as a cashier for two years. In that time, my drawer's money count was never wrong. I never mishandled the money. A lot of businesses shop there and often ask me to exchange bills for them, smaller to larger and vice versa. One day, I ring up a nice guy, and as he's walking away, he asks if I can take his five twenty dollars and give him a $100. I say okay and do it. He puts the 100 in his right pocket, walks away a bit, pulls a 10 out of his left and comes back yelling that I ripped him off. I tell him there is absolutely no way I did that over and over. My manager comes over and he starts complaining up a storm about me, cheating him of 90 bucks. I pull my drawer out of the register and print out my total sales for the day on a recipe. I handed it to the manager and told them to get it counted because there was absolutely no way I shorted the fool. The guy then stormed out of the store. Needless to say, there was a new policy about making change for people the next week. Story 25. This will probably never see the light of day, but it's too asinine to not share it. I used to work at a large beauty retailer that sells high-end products, including skincare, and has a very generous return policy for our client's peace of mind. Needless to say, the policy often gets abused. One is allowed to return a 3-4 used product because they changed their mind, etc. One day... A lady tried to return a very pricey skin cream that retails for over $200. I opened it up to check that the jar wasn't totally empty. The only time we're allowed to refuse is if there is literally no product to return. It was filled with mayonnaise. Goddamn mayonnaise. I looked at her, smelled it, and informed her that it was mayonnaise, not the product she purchased. With a straight face, she said, oh, that's weird, turned on her heel, and walked out of the store. Story 26. I worked as a moving man and was contracted to help a driver deliver a shipment for Colorado. We bring in this china cabinet and the homeowner walks up to it as soon as we set it down and kicks one of the feet. It spins around and he goes, you broke that and I want you to pay for it to be fixed. The driver pulls out the accountability log and goes, no sir, right here I marked that as broken before I moved it. The own then goes off about how he could have wrote that after he broke it and the driver just goes, I don't think so, because you signed off on it, and then proceeds to flip to the carbon copy of the owner's signature, stating he understands the damages. Lots of stammering followed. I also worked at a hardware store where this guy would come in and try to return merchandise with the competitor's name on it for store credit. He would bring in like a rusty axe with Lowe's stamped on it and say, I bought this here yesterday, and it broke. Story 27. Had some schmuck come into my family's restaurant and order breakfast. By his attitude, I know he's an unpleasant person, so I make sure I'm extra on point. Sucks, but generally makes my life easier. After he's done with his meal, he calls me over, points to a small dark curly hair on the side of his dish, and tells me matter-of-factly that he won't be paying for his meal. I lean over, look at the hair, 
Then I point out our cook. You could see our cooks, grill, fryer, everything. Don't ever design a restaurant like this, trust me, and that he's wearing a hairnet. I then point out further that neither I nor any of our staff have curly black hair, but that he does. I matter-of-factly inform him that he will be paying for his meal. Story 28. We had a customer recently who bought a bed with a check. Being a small business, we wait until the check clears before we have merchandise delivered just in case it bounces. This time it went out to the customer before the check actually cleared. And of course, it bounced. When I got the check back, I called Mr. Smug to collect. He sounded very proud of himself when he asked what I thought I could do about it since he already had the bed. Here in Las Vegas, writing a bad check and not taking care of it is a felony, something that not even my boss knew. After I informed the gentleman that I'd go ahead and turn it over to the district attorney and have him prosecuted his attitude changed, and he suddenly had the money. Story 29. I used to work as a waitress in a small Italian restaurant. I come from a small town so there weren't many places to go eat. Seeing as my place was pretty cheap and cheerful, we got some pretty scummy clientele. So this one time we get a huge party of about 40 people booked in, which takes up basically half the restaurant. About half of them say they want surf and turf, which isn't even on our menu. So my boss buys in a load of fillet steak especially for them. So the party arrive and start drinking pretty quickly. By the time their food starts coming out, it's coming in stages simply because there are so many of them. We, the waitresses, keep apologizing being super polite to them and tell them we are dealing with their order as best we can, considering its size in relation to the kitchen, and the fact that we had other customers too. When they all finally have their food, every single one of them sends back their fillet steak surf and turf, all of them saying it's inedible and verbally abusing the waitresses, even though they all more or less cleaned their plates. The chef boss guy manages to calm them all down, and we think all is well. They have their birthday cake, etc. Everything seems fine. Then they get their bill. It comes to about 450 pounds, which is reasonable considering how many of them there were. But they all start getting uppity about it and only leave 100 pounds. When we say they can't just do that, we get more verbal abuse and they all leave. Or so we thought. The main perpetrator of the abuse emerges from the toilets, clearly steaming drunk shouting and yelling, escorted by her equally as drunk husband, who decides shoving me into the bar is a good way of getting by me. My boss was a pretty spineless guy, but when that happened, he flipped his cow and told the guy to GTFO. Turned out later they were on pub watch around my town and were well known in the rougher neighborhood as being low lives, basically. Story 30. I worked at Pei Wei, casual Asian restaurant, for five hours, so I've seen some messed up up cow. In the restaurant business, you always remember that one piece of cow. I remember it was a busy night, and I took this phone order, and I immediately knew it was this bad person that always complains about her food and always ends up getting it for free. So she gives me her order two kids' meals, each modifications up the peach. I verify everything, since she always complains that her meals are too dry, but she refuses the extra sauce when I'm on the phone with her. Like clockwork, she comes in an hour later complaining that her meal was too dry, and she needs to have it taken care of, along with gift cards, or she'll tell all her friends not to eat here, all while holding a little kid in her arms. The manager, who is basically a cat, and caves in every time is off tonight, so I get the pleasure of dealing with her. I tell her no, repeatedly. I tell her I was the person who took her order. She starts causing a scene. My other manager comes out and tells her she needs to leave. She tries to grab me and calls me a flipping dyke, and repeatedly tells me to go fudge my boy self, and tells my pregnant manager that she hopes that she miscarries and overdoses. I can't make this up. All the customers watching escorted her and her poor kid outside. What a flipping psycho. Over two kids' meals. Story 31. I'm not sure if this was a scam, but one time there was a woman in front of me at the grocery store who was buying three pieces of fruit. She started telling the clerk that she wanted $1 on a $20 bill and the rest on a debit card. So he rings that up and starts giving her $19 and is about to charge her $8 on her debit card when she starts protesting saying, No, I want $6 in nickels and $4 in dimes for my change. So then he starts doing that. This continues with her changing her mind for 10 minutes while the guy giving her change tries to stay as calm as possible. He ended up giving her the correct change, and it sure seemed like she was trying to do something. But I can't be sure. Story 32. One of my friend's aunts owns a blue boutique next to a pretty big park, has fireworks and whatnot on the 4th of July, by around six most parking spots everywhere else are taken. So she lets us charge people to park in her parking lot. We usually charge $5, but that day we were charging $10 just because we knew people would pay it. So, a few middle-aged women drive up in a pretty nice car, ask if they can park. I tell them how much we were charging to park in the parking lot. They agreed and said they'd pay when they were getting out of their car, so I watched them pull into a space, 
sit for about 20 minutes, then get out and try and leave the parking lot without me noticing. I noticed and told them they needed to pay for the spot or go park somewhere else. At this point, I could tell that they were irritated, I noticed. But we all knew there were no other places to park, so they came over and acted like they were going to pay. The lady that was driving pulls out a ball of ones and hands it to me. I count it quickly and tell her she only gave me $7. She freaks out trying to accuse me of pocketing three bucks. I simply tell her I did. She continues to bad person out, asking if I even had the authority to charge her. I tell her I did and give her the owner's number and invite her to call. She pulls out her phone and calls the cops instead. The cops show up. I explain what happened. They get a hold of my friend's aunt who assures them everything is okay. The cops instructed me to give them back the $7. I do. Then they tell the ladies to leave. So they do. But when they pull out of the parking space, the cops noticed something that made them want to check out the vehicle. Turns out it was used during a 7. 11 robbery the night before. I gotta watch the look on their faces as I laughed at them getting arrested. Story 33. I used to work at an Apple store in a shopping center in Northern England. In said shopping center, employees of various stores got discounts at Subway and other food places. I had just started as a specialist and went to get my staff meal deal at Subway. The supervisor, a guy in his mid-twenties, realizes I'm new and tries to take advantage of the fact. Him. So man, I'm giving you a discount on your sandwich. How about a discount on a new iMac? Me. Sorry, it doesn't work like that. Pretty much the easiest way to get a discount is if you're a student. Him. Okay, good to know. I ate, left, and thought nothing of it. Around four HRS later, he comes into the store with a random chubby ginger kid around 12 thirteenths. The kid looked nothing like him. Him. Hey, man. Right. Here's your student points to kid. Can I get my discount now? Me. Are you trying to use a random kid like he's a discount coupon? Him. Well, you said if you're a student, you get a discount. Me. Yes, if you're a student. He is, you're not. Him. Oh, er, he's my brother. I turn to the kid. What's his surname? Kid. Er, dunno, me, nice try. Sorry, can't help you. The best bit was, upon leaving, they both left in separate directions without saying a word to each other. Huh. Story 34. When I was a teenager, I worked at a computer store. I was 16 or 15 or something. It was a little mom and pop place where the owners were only in their 20s and had just gotten married. Needless to say, they often weren't at work. But that's okay, I was making bank for a teenager and really knew my computers. It wasn't so busy, usually, that I couldn't handle the shop and the computer repair. Small town and all that. This guy comes in, who I've seen and talked to before. I greet him by name. It was John. I still remember it, apparently. I tell John his super special custom PC is done and working, so he can pick it up. He says the owner just called him. I give him the PC and he writes a check. No biggie, he has written checks before and they have gone through. Besides, this was years ago before 80% of all checks written would bounce or were fraudulent. A few days later, the owner is running to the bank to cash all the checks and such. This check comes back bad. It had a stop payment put on it. He calls John back but receives no answer. The check was for a grand, so we aren't going to let that slide. John calls back a few days later and asks if we have cashed the check. My mind flashed to the time the owner and I were talking about how the business was ran. John was in the shop. He tells me checks are only cashed once a month since we don't get many. I tell John, no, we haven't, and he says, cool, something on my new computer is wrong with the drivers. Then he gets full-on upset that something isn't working. I tell him to bring it in that I'll fix it for free because we want to sell working computers. He drops his computer off and is being a little bad person the whole time. The computer is packed to the brim with censored photos. Back when a gigabyte was huge, I'd say it had 700 MB or more of censored photos. The driver problem was a virus. The whole time this was going on, I was keeping the owner aware of what was happening while he was in the back repairing computers. He thought it was hilarious. The last step was to have the police waiting when he came to pick it up a few hours later. What followed was him sprinting out the back of the store and into the city, losing the police. They went to his home and found an entire garage full stolen goods and a bunch of classified type newspapers that he used to post the goods to get cash with. He hadn't had a job in 10 years and had made a living stealing and selling the goods.